politics in Michigan. This week was the deadline to run for office in this year's election. There's some interesting names on the ballots, like Robert Fricano running for judge, Todd Corser running for county prosecutor. But really, the bigger look is at the political climate in Michigan. What will voters take into account, and could that change the makeup of the legislature? But of course, we still have to take a look at some of these names. I, I, Todd Corser, I, I mean... I just, I saw that. It never like, seems to get the message, does it? You know, and it's very interesting because there's probably so many people out there that would be great to run for office. But this guy, and, and I don't know what it is, it's like, why is it, why is it people like that just feel like, well, I'm going back into the arena. I can win this well, thing. Well, I, I don't know, <laughs> I mean, he's a unique case. He's nutty as a fruitcake. And I think just because you file for office doesn't mean you're going to win. I would think it would be very unlikely that people would put him in a position where he was prosecuting other criminals. Uh, you know, I, so, I mean, it's a, a, a showy thing to do. He cannot stand not to have his name in the papers, on, you know, on the Internet, to be a subject of conversation. I can't believe even he thinks he could win this. Well, what do you think, Steve? There's a bit of megalomania that you're dealing with right. uh, here. I mean, I, I, I thought there were some other, I mean, there are a lot, this is one of my favorite times of year, uh, and it follows one of my least favorite times of year, which is trying to sort through all of these candidates for all of these offices and, and help uh, inform voters about who they are and, and, and who to vote for. But, but you do see lots of people, interestingly, sort of throwing their hats into the ring to say, hey, what caught your I, attention think I, wanna, I think I want to, I thought that the Fakano filing was really interesting. I don't know, you know, I, I've never thought of him in that way. Uh, as a judge, but, uh, you but it's know, it's a nice, nice, soft spot to land. Well, eight, obviously, he still wants what, to it's serve a six year uh, and the eight public year term. Yeah, and, you no, know, those are great jobs. He's in his early sixties. You can ride that out a couple terms, and you know, we're also going to have uh, it's another pension. Right, oh. <laughs> it's another pension from the county. Mm -hmm. uh, um, there was a. We also have a, a city council seat in the city that we have to vote on because there was a vacancy last year. There's some really interesting people who filed uh, for that, people I didn't necessarily expect to, uh, to see. So uh, it, it's always, it's, I, I, you know, I give people a lot of credit for, for doing that, for raising your hand and saying, hey, I'm going to try to run for this office. I'm going to raise the money and do the organization and, and try to get the votes. It's not easy, and it's, it's subjecting yourself to more public scrutiny than I think most people believe when they sign those well, papers. What about Janice Renfrey running for against John Conyers? Yeah, I thought that no, was she's been talking about that uh, for I a mean, while. I mean, it's, it's an interesting run. I mean, Conyers has been doing sort of this weekend at Bernie's Act for the last couple terms, and yet he still can't get folks to line up behind an, alter, an alternative candidate. And the unions for the last couple, couple of cycles have been grumbling and saying, God, this is the last time we're going to s support him, and yet it comes around, they'll support him again. And, a lot of people would think, believe it's time for him to go, and yet I, don't, I think he's going to go out there. The voters in that district don't Absolutely. believe Absolutely. Yeah. I think he'll go out feet first. All right. Well, let's take a look at just what the political climate is in general in Michigan, and when we're looking at maybe a possible change up in the House or in the, in the Senate state-wise, what are we looking at? What are voters going to be taking into consideration when they go to the polls this year? I mean, are they looking at the roads deal? Are they looking at how the legislature deals with DPS? What do you think, I Nolan? think it's, you know, I, I think it's like every other race in the country. It's a it's about the general discontent. I don't think specific issues are, are going to say, oh, he voted for that, I'm going to go out there and vote against him. I think there's just a general discontent with the institutions of government. I think in Michigan the most interesting races will be, to watch will be House races. We are now at the end of the six years, those House members who were swept in in the 2010 Tea Party wave, you know, their six years are up. Now their districts have been redrawn and redrawn more favorably, but Republicans were having trouble recruiting good candidates in those traditionally Democratic districts. So it'll be interesting to see. I think that that's the biggest challenge for Republicans is holding the think they, state yeah, house. Do you think they lose the house? I don't know if they lose it, um, but I think it's going to be a, a, a real real fight. Yeah, so what does the discontent translate to for voters? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure at the state level what that looks like. I mean, uh, you have such a, a, a Republican majority, but you, but as Nolan pointed out, you also have a map that's been drawn to specific Republican a, a advantage. So if you're discontent with what you have, uh, really your choice to choose something different is is somewhat limited uh, because of the way your district is drawn. And you, and and you so, know, we, we, despite the anger, despite the frustration of voters, and despite the outrageous things they're doing sort of at the presidential level, I don't think a single 
incumbent congressman has lost a primary yet. Not that I know. I've not heard of one. Well, that so was. It doesn't was, seem was, to be. But it's a, hard to. Kind of my next question about about movement. what, how the well, presidential, how the presidential election is going to impact what happens here in Michigan, depending on who's on the top of the ticket. Less so, perhaps, now that they've ended straight um, ticket voting in in Michigan, and for public Republicans, that was certainly opportune timing because you know you would you would otherwise perhaps have a lot of of folks. Uh, particularly Democrats saying we're just going to, you know, we can't vote for Trump. We're just going to pull the donkey's tail and let it let it go. So I think it's going to have an impact, but less so because of that new legislation. What do you think, last word? I think Trump is going to be devastating to downstate Republicans, regardless of straight ticket voting. Republicans are very fearful of that. How do you get it's people motivated to go and vote f for an important state house or state senate race? Or, uh, but that's where the money will go. Race. I don't think a whole lot of establishment money is going to go to Donald Trump. I think that money is going to go to con congressional races, senate races, and even state legislative races. Because the one thing that Republicans, I mean, they have managed to, w to win the House, the White House the last two cycles, but their gains at the state level have been tremendous since, yeah. since 2000 and, and Aid. I mean, they now now control 19 states, both the um, governor's office and both houses of the legislature. 33 governor seats. Um, they have a majority control at the state level. All right. Well, you know, following up now on our.